Cubs bid farewell to a legendary pitcher and the last member of the 2016 World Series team who's been simultaneously playing for the Cubbies. We'll talk about that. Are the Cubs at the GM meetings looking for value on the margins? And does that mean that they're not going to spend this offseason? We'll get into that. And would the Cubs really be willing to trade, in my opinion, their best prospect in Owen Casey? There's reports from the GM meetings that he is on the trading block. We'll talk about that and more right here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Let's get this party started. Go Cubs! Hey, everybody, Mick Gillespie. Welcome to the Cubs baseball channel as we talk Cubs right here all day, every day. Now, we didn't do it yesterday, but you know what? We're back today. And I was wondering, like, I, you started to hear reports yesterday that there was the possibility that Kyle Hendricks would be going back home and pitching for one of the teams out in the South L.A. area or the uh, South California area in L.A., maybe the Padres, weren't, weren't sure, but the Angels are where he landed. And so I said, ah, i just not going to do a show. We'll just do one today, and that's exactly what we got. A lot of news to talk about today. So like and subscribe. Thanks for being here. I'm at Broadcaster Mick on the socials, and it is always a pleasure to talk to you guys and uh, wherever you might catch us. Now, right here on the YouTube channel, we appreciate you being here. Um, Instagram, TikTok, X, you know, we try to do all the things, but uh, let's talk a little bit of Cubs baseball. Kyle Hendricks signs with the Angels. I'll tell you, man, this guy has been the consummate pro since breaking into the big leagues at 2000 uh, at, or in 2014. And he's 97 and 81 in his 11 years with the Cubs and a, a career earned run average of 368. But the numbers don't tell the entire story with him. He is a fantastic person. He's been a great leader. He has been uh, a champion. He's pitched in the biggest games that the Cubs have played in in the last 100 and plus years, including the World, the World Series Game 7. Before that, it was his start and his dominance that beat the Dodgers to get the Cubs to their first World Series since 1945. And uh, he's going back to the L.A. area where he's from. So he'll, he got a one-year deal with the Angels. Last year, he was paid $16.5 million and really just didn't have his, his best stuff. I mean, it was definitely, a I felt like, a step-back year for him. But I'll tell you, even with as bad as things were last year, uh, and, and it got rough there for a while, he, he bounced back and actually finished – a pretty decent season, but he ended up with a 498 ERA, a four and 12 record, and uh, or excuse me, a 592 ERA and a 412 record. And uh, and and in his career, and just like last year, even when he didn't have his best, he was just out there as a bulldog through 130 innings plus and and was kind of that guy that hey, when they wanted him to go into the bullpen. He did that. Didn't stay there long, but it, we thought he might. And then came back in the starting rotation with a rotation of pitchers that seemed to be constantly hurt and, and answered the bell. Now, like I said, it was by far his worst year with the Cubs and we, but we wish him the best of luck as he moves forward. And he's a great guy. One of my all time favorite people to be around in the Cubs organization. You talk about showing up early, leaving late, doing the right thing, understanding the game at an elite level, teaching the game to his teammates, setting the example. He's just the consummate pro and someone that will, I think, eventually be a Cubs Hall of Famer. I just feel like he's one of the best all-time pitchers that the Cubs have had. And I know maybe statistically you could argue this and that, but there hasn't been a Cub that won bigger games than him, period. You know, I mean, it's like we got one World Series in 100 and change, right? So 
him pitching game six against the Dodgers in game seven and coming up big in both of them is uh, definitely the stuff of legends. But uh, good luck to him as he moves on. It's going to be weird to see him in an Angels uniform, but that became official uh, yesterday. All right, this is something that I kind of touched on a couple of days ago. Jed Hoyer talking to Bleacher Nation said, uh, always we're looking to be creative. If we can find value on the margins to be able to do that, he went on to say that that I think there's room for it this year. Everyone comes here with a lot of great ideas, talking about the GM meetings, and then they usually get squashed within the first cocktail party, which is pretty funny. And then you go back to the drawing board. But we'll talk to everyone here. We'll be super active in discussions and see where it leads us. Uh, the creative thing to me is what I'm curious about, right? Um, you know, it, it, talking about how the Cubs weren't optimizing individual matchups. You know, they've, they've said that they're going to try to go with analytics over career scouts, which I don't think is a great idea, but I think you need both. And that in includes re a report in, uh, in the athletic that said that they were going to not have scouts at big league and uh, double and triple a games. And, and, and there's a lot more to this to me than just, Hey, we're, 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 you know, we're not going to have scouts there. It seems like the Cubs are having some financial issues. I mean, that's that's to me what, what it feels like. Hey, we'd rather just save the money and and put it into analytics. Analytics can give you some help, but it's a tool. You know, the scouts give you perspective. I'm a big believer in scouting, but I'm not every scout. The best scouts. You go and get the best scouts, the guys that that can watch and pick up stuff and and learn about what a player's tendencies are on and off the field. Those those type of scouts, maybe they're just hard to find. But in my career, I've met some really amazing people whose perspective could help a team and a franchise and an organization. And I and I hate to hear where, where it's stuff like that when you're talking about a, a huge business and you're saying, well, you know, we're cutting back. And this feels kind of the same way to me. And I've been one of these guys that feels like you can win without spending a lot of money. But the problem that I have is that some of these contracts that the Cubs have gone and given away really do handicap your ability to go out there and and pay for the best of the best. Given Dansby Swanson $177 million, that is supposed to be a contract that puts him as your best player, and he's just not. I mean, he's like a guy that hits at the bottom of the lineup. And he's really not that good at hitting. And he wasn't that last year. And maybe he can bounce back and become above average, but he was below average last year. And you're paying him to be a superstar. You know, Ian Happ got a big, a big salary. And I know he's won some gold gloves, but that's a position that financially you didn't have to pay that money for. You got a bunch of guys in the minor leagues that could do something similar and do it for a lot less and would be under control from when you sign them you know, as a rookie, before they were a rookie, you know, as a minor leaguer. So it feels like to me that business-wise, things could be done a lot better. And then now, you know, you're going, well, we got to try to figure out how to win uh, under the margins. And this, the problem that I have with this is that right now, with the, with the city of Chicago having the White Sox on the other side of town and no one's going to their games, they're terrible. They're talking about selling the team and moving out of the city. If I'm the Cubs, and I've said this on here before, I'm putting all the chips in the center of the table. I'm gonna help, I'm gonna help pack their bags and push them out of town by, by going out and getting star players to go with this lineup and this roster of players that are uh, average and above average. Like I'm in win now mode. Like when Sam Zell you know, was the guy who was in charge of the Cubs, right? And he, they, they wanted to sell the Cubs and they wanted to get the value up and they went out and signed players and the team got really good. That's what I'm looking at right now. Not taking a step back. Uh, 83 and 79 is what this team is. And 
they've been that for the last two years. And with the way that the roster's constructed now, how's it going to improve for next year? So I'm just curious, you know, to me, it's like, what's the move that you're going to be able to do that's under the margins? And is it because you spent $177 million on Dansby Swanson? I mean, wouldn't you rather just go and put the big money out and get the superstar player? And maybe that's not an option, but to me, that should be an option because you're the Cubs. And it and that's what it costs to go get a Juan Soto, a Freddie Freeman, a Mookie Betts. But it takes those guys, Bryce Harper, to win championships on a consistent basis or at least have a chance to win. you got to have elite talent. And and that that quote and it gives me the feeling that 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 maybe they don't have the ownership might not have the confidence in Jed to really go out and spend a lot of money because he's not renewed on his contract. They haven't had any success. They haven't won a playoff game since what 2017 or whatever it is. I mean, it's been a long time, right? So that and 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 they just keep getting further and further away from what it takes to be a champion. And that, to me, talking about finding value on the margins doesn't sound like they're really confident in taking that next step and uh, and and becoming a champion again. Now, this really was a little concerning to me right here, and I'm going to throw it up. Uh, Owen Casey on the trade block. John Morosi, who's one of the best in the business, says that Cubs prospect, and in my mind, he'd be the top the top Cubs prospect. The Cubs got him as a really young player from the Padres in the U Darvish trade. And they've brought him up through their system. And he's been great. He's got this ability to barrel the ball. He's a, he's an excellent defender, but the problem is the Cubs have all of these guys in the outfield. Ian Happ, you can't get rid of him because he's got a no trade clause. Say Suzuki, even though he's not very good defensively, you, you signed him. You got Cody Bellinger that opted back in because nobody's going to give him $27.5 million this year. He's just going to stay put, and I don't blame him. Uh, you know, what do you do with the other guys? Where are the at-bats? But would you really trade Owen Casey, and what would you get back for him? And this is one of those deals that worries me when you have a front office that's not signed and on a what I would call a one-year deal, a lame duck year, that you would actually go out there and allow them to trade the best player that you have in the minor leagues, that that would worry me. Look, of all these other guys that you have uh, that are in the minor leagues, Kevin Alcantara, trade him if you if you got a good deal for him, right? Alexander Canario, trade him if you get a good deal for him. You know these are these are good decent outfielders, but Owen Casey's the guy that's got the biggest upside, and he also comes off as a player that you punch in the outfield in the lineup for 10 years and, and you've got something really good. He just, the way that he's always come to work, his consistency, look, no young player is perfect. He's been the youngest or one of the youngest guys in every league as he's moved up. He's got power. When There's going to come a point where he gets to the big leagues and he gets through a season and then he gets through a second season and all of a sudden for the first time in his life, he's not the youngest guy anymore. Or he's not the most inexperienced guy anymore. You are looking at the best player that the Cubs have in their system. If you trade this guy, you better get something good back. Plain and simple. And you're taking a big risk with this guy. Uh, James Triantos, another good player. He doesn't play outfield. But you could say, well, you know, he gets a lot of hits, but he doesn't walk enough. You know, they're not going to trade Matt Shaw. He's a first-round pick. And the walks and the on-base percentage are, and the power, right, are, are, are excellent. So I'm, I'm guessing that, that that's a guy that you would take off. And I would put Owen Casey right there with him. So maybe the Cubs feel like it, the only thing I could think of is that they feel like that he's got this weakness with soft, soft right-handed movement down and in, and maybe he didn't then make an adjustment to it, and they feel like he's it's a risk and you can get a big reward back for him. But he's 22 years old. The guy's got great power. He's a clutch player. And he, to me, I look at him and think, man, this guy has – he's got star potential. I mean, he just reminds me of, you know, a Paul Goldschmidt type. 
with his skill set and, and his ability to hit home runs and his ability to barrel the ball. So I saw that from John Morosi and I was like, okay, well, you know, is that, is that going around the margins? And is, and if you're in the front office, are you deciding that, look, man, I, I've got to save our careers. Jed Hoyer loses this job. He's not going to be probably, he's going to be somebody's assistant for the rest of his career. He's got one chance. Because those GM jobs, those president jobs, they are tough to get. And he's already had one with the Padres and it didn't work out. And now he's got one with the Cubs and he's right at the end of his leash. So, I mean, he's probably looking at how can I take what we have right here and make something happen before it's too late. But that's a bad place to be in as an organization because you don't want somebody making decisions based on what's best for their career and not what's based uh, on – the the success of the future of the franchise moving down the road. So I I don't know. I mean that, and I'm not saying he's doing that. I'm just saying that's a worry that I would have if I was the Ricketts family. Uh, by the way, congratulations to Pete Ricketts, who was uh, reelected senator of Nebraska last night, where they're from, where the Ricketts family's from. The Ricketts family's been great to me, and uh, Pete's always been a nice guy. So whatever your politics are, and I know some of you are going to be like, I hate. Republicans and some of you are going to be like, go Pete, you know, whatever. I don't care about that. I'm just saying as a person, it, you know, it's somebody that has always been nice to me. Congratulations to him on a successful night and in, um, in Nebraska. All right, guys, look, get in the comments section and tell me what you think. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about what's going on at the GM meetings where the Cubs are right now, moving forward. And congratulations to Kyle Hendricks, who, deserves all the love that he's going to get when he comes back to Chicago one day as a visiting player or as a front office person. His days with the Cubs aren't over. Maybe as a player they are, but this guy's special, and we love him and uh, hate to see him go, but it was time, and we hate to see you guys go, but like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, and we will talk to you again really soon, and uh, that is probably going to be tomorrow unless something breaks. Go Cubs.